Force sensor, a card, a motion sensor measuring the position and speed, and then we can calculate the acceleration of this card an experiment. So we're given here the two graphs of velocity and the force. The force started at 5.5 seconds, and the reason why, the card is given initial speed up 2 meters per second and move with this constant speed until the elastic cord, okay, elastic cord, so we push it, it moves almost with a constant speed, constant velocity, because the friction is negligible, and therefore the velocity here does not change much. It is almost constant. Huh? But then the elastic cord starts extending, and then it exerts a elastic force pulling the cart, slowing it down, and therefore eventually the velocity becomes zero, and the cart is pulled backward moving to, uh, in the opposite direction to the left toward the elastic cord, okay? Using the given information, so the time interval from 0.5 to 0.75 here, this point is right in the middle, so that 0.75 is the time interval where the force exerts, the elastic force exerts on the, on the, the card, okay? Yes. Uh, like starting from here to here, or even a little bit further from here, but it start decreasing to almost stop decreasing. That is a boy five, and this is boy seventy five second. Using the given information, show that the area under the graph above is one newton second. To show that the area one newton second, we don't know the peak, and it is a like a part of a sinusoidal graph, a sine graph is not a triangle, it's not a parabola, okay? Uh, so how do we prove that that area, okay, with, with the given information, okay, that area under the graph is the integral integration of um, the function of the force, the force function, which is this one, amplitude times psi, of omega t and taking the integral with respect to the time, okay? And the uh, upper and lower limit of the integration is 0 0.5 to 0 0.75, okay? Yes. And according to the graph, it's the one fourth of the period, a sinusoidal graph. Uh, so, the not one fourth, sorry, one half from here to here is the period. And so, this is half period, huh? Half period. We're given omega, which is uh, twelve point six. Replacing it in here, twelve point six. So let me change that notation. Uh, now I'm, I love with with good note, <laughs> twelve point six. And um, amplitude six point three. Huh? Replacing with amplitude by six point three also. 6.3 and do the risk integral, huh? I believe you can do that, okay? Do it. <laughs> A side function, use the substitution method, huh? To change the 12.6. You can even use a calculator to find a solution without doing normally, okay? You are allowed to use the calculator in the testing room. Yes. Yeah, so just, just, um, Use a calculator. One point one, uh, zero point one five. Okay, beautiful. It's very close to one, huh? Calculator menu, calculus, huh? Numerical interval from point five to point seventy five. The function is six point three. The amplitude. 6.3 Newton, yeah, and the sine of 12.6 Omega, Omega T, uh, sine. I need to convert this into radian, huh? Uh, did you use the radian? Probably there's like degree in your calculator. I use radian. Uh-huh. A sine function trick, sine 12.6 and the time X as a variable. And then the x 
that's it. And, uh, there's a different way. You can plot a graph and ask the calculator to calculate the area under that graph. And I want to plot the graph function. The function is 6.3 times the sine of 12.6 x there. Enter, and then I plot the graph. And I would choose the window. Uh, window. Oh, spotting. Choose the window to set it from 0 to uh, 0 0.75, huh? Only that. Maximum, minimum value, I don't know. Just plot that again. There. Okay. So the 0.5 is probably here. Trace, trace that. Yeah. Yeah, the 0.5 is, is here. Okay. So I change the window again. The minimum is 0.5. There. And then I will calculate the area under this graph. Uh, graph. Mode window, how to do that, I forgot. Second function, trace. Okay, that's it. Second function, calculate here, calculate. Calculate integral. Integral, huh? enter. Lower limit. It should be exactly 0.5, but if we cannot find it exactly, so then it's approximation anyway, because um, the problem has to prove that it approximately equal to, to 1, huh? not exactly 1. And upper limit, of course, we move it to all over the right, huh? which is 0.75. Oh, <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah, that's the problem. We need to figure out why the calculator was wrong, huh? Yeah, enter that area. Yeah, now it's correct. <laughs> what is wrong with the calculation and the integration calculator? Figure it out. So that's the second way, huh? Second way to do the calculation integral. And the last way is doing that manually. It's possible, but it takes time. Okay. Yes. Definitely possible. Substitution. Poi nine nine nine, and therefore uh, it must be equal to one newton second. The experiment is repeated using different code that exert a larger area force on the cart. The cart start and end with the same speeds as those in the original experiment. Will the area of the graph of the force at a function of time for the new code be greater than, less than, or equal to the area for that of the original code? What do you think? A different code, greater force. Greater force. Meaning greater amplitude, greater um, Angular frequency also. The time will be shorter. The peak will be taller. And the area will be greater also. Because the greater force will produce greater um, work. OK. Slowing down, meaning it takes less time for the new court to reduce the velocity of the car from two meters per second to zero, taken a shorter time. Okay. Yes. Uh, but possibly the area can be equal because that area is equal to the change in kinetic energy of the car. That change in kinetic energy is um, twice of the decrease of the, the kinetic energy from minus two. We don't know the mass, but the point is the, the final kinetic energy is one half the mass times two square and minus initial kinetic energy, meaning the kinetic energy change from this value to zero and then increase again to that same value, considering uh, assuming that is the conversion is 100%, there's no loss of energy in form of thermal energy. So I think uh, answers of the question, see here, the area is the same. It's taller, it's shorter in uh, the time, but the area will be the same with the previous one. 
Okay, this is the new one. Same area with the last one. Equal to, so this is my answer. And the justification, the explanation, check that thing. Mm -hmm. No, we don't have the answer for the free response, huh? Anyway, we can open the, oh yeah, yeah, up here. Question, there's a lot. Question B here. Huh? Area the same. Using the given equation, show the area done. Okay, equal to, correct, equal to. Seeing the car start and ends at the same velocity, the impulse of the car will be the same to the area, the graph will be the same. Okay, that's the answer. Basically the same as <coughs> my explanation earlier, okay? Because the velocity changes from minus two meter per second to positive two meter per second, the change in momentum is the same for the two cases, okay? Therefore, the impulse, which is the product of the new, the new force and the time interval, the same. The impulse uh, of the old force, huh? the, the old force, the old court. That's it. So the area, the impose, which is the area, so taller area, but uh, same area, huh? taller, I mean, I mean taller peak, but shorter time. Same area. That's it. Okay. Yes. Uh, question D. The elastic code from the origin exper original experiment can be modeled as an ideal spring with a force constant K. Ideal spring. Derive the question for the maximum change in length of the code. Change in the length of the code. Express your answer in terms of m, k, v0 and physical constants as appropriate. Maximum change in length, meaning the maximum extension. <coughs> maximum extension. That extension maximum is equal to the maximum force divided by the constant, spring constant. Constant, okay. And that maximum force is, is the amplitude of the given formula up there, here, yeah, which is 6.3 Newton. Okay, we're do, doing the old one, right? Original code, not a new one, huh? I think so, because the new one, we don't know the new amplitude. 6.3 Newton is the maximum force. And the spring constant is K, but way, we only have uh, K, there's no other term M and V0. Check answer. Yeah, you make K, make, oh, they use the conservation of energy. Yeah, conservation energy, V0. That's it, we can do that also. Conservation of energy, meaning potential energy equal to kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of the card one half mv zero square initial kinetic energy, which is the maximum energy. Okay, okay. we convert totally into the elastic energy of the core, which is one half k times the maximum extension squared. Okay, and from this far equation, we can derive for x max, which is the square root of uh, one half simplify. Huh? X max is yeah, m over k times V0. The student performed several trials and experiments for this, this trial. The card is empty. In each succeeding trial, the block is added to the card, changing the mass. 
In all trials, the cat has initial speed 2 meters per second to the right. The cat rebounds to the left with a speed of 2 meters per second, meaning the same speed but opposite direction. And the maximum change in length of the elastic cord is measured. The total length, uh, total mass of the cat, and the maximum change in the length of the cord is each trial recorded in the table below. Indicate below which quantity should be graphed to you a straight line with a slope that could be used to calculate the numerical value for the force constant of the elastic cord K. We can do this relationship, yeah, to find K. Velocity, V0, okay, do this one, this, this relationship. Plot the graph to find K, so that K is the K is the slope, okay? So yeah. I now will square both sides, X square max equal M over K V0 square. V0 is constant, therefore I will, the mass is a variable, and therefore the V0 should be placed here, it's constant, and the mass is a changing variable, huh? Therefore the slope is V0 square over K, okay? Yes. So, for the two columns, what other things should we calculate? X squared, definitely. X square and the last column is K, huh? It is, yeah, it K. Wait, wait, wait. So, what else on the empty column should we calculate? Uh, that graph is X max visit. Um, the vertical exit on their graph is X max visit. Visit what? Uh, the square root of M, huh? The spirit of M. So later they will need to swear the slope to, for, to calculate the, the K. Their graph is different from ours, and therefore uh, calculating the slope in their graph is different, huh? Okay. So you can do again this problem again later, uh, calculating the slope. But now assume that the slope is uh, the same thing with the um, answer, meaning. The vertical exit is x max, and the horizontal exit is the square root, the mass, and we have the slope of um, 0 0.33, 0 0.33, which is that slope is the square root of m. So wait, look at the formula again. Uh, the square root. So where root m is the variable, so the slope is v0 over k. That slope is v0 over square root of k, okay? Yes. Because the formula, the formula is x max equal uh, m over k, m over k, v0, where v0 here is a constant and m is a variable. Okay, so here, V0 is 4, sorry, E2. So look, K. Now we can calculate K. K is a square of 2, which is 4 divided by the square of 0.33. Oh, sorry, I forgot this to square the, the 2, huh? 4 here. Yeah. And then 37. 37 Newton per meter. Do that again for the other graph. With uh, vertical axis, the x0 square, x max square, and horizontal exit is the uh, mass. So the slope of this graph is, hmm, forgot, v square over k, v square over k. And the slope here is different. The slope here is uh, v0 over square root of k. So there are two ways to uh, find a K. Huh?